This may look like a computer game, but it's actually a sophisticated experiment. These soldiers are going through the same scenario again and again to see which mix of weapons and tactics works best. One of the advantages of this kind of training is that assessors can introduce variables, perhaps a new element like a new weapon or a change in tactics, and see how that affects the outcome of the exercise. It's quicker and probably provides a more reliable result than repeatedly running around the same combat village in the flesh. The results there could be affected by anything from the weather through to a training accident or even out-and-out -out tiredness. Many of the systems being tested here don't even exist yet, like this upgraded warrior. No one yet has touched a real warrior with the, um, you know, the capability sustainment program, the Warrior CSP. It's got a 40 millimeter cannon, it's got improved optics and sighting, it can fire on the move. Well, one doesn't exist, so we couldn't do that in the live environment. We could represent it, but we couldn't have a real one. Uh, here, we can represent it really accurately. And you, know, you will find that soldiers think, well, actually, this gives us new capabilities, uh, which lead to new way of fighting and new ways of organising ourselves and it's really interesting some of the some of the early insights that we're getting from that. The game is based on this real world combat village in northern France and the soldiers involved were all there just last month. The main effort here isn't to train these troops but it is still a valuable exercise even if it's lacking a certain realism. The human factors are uh, certainly a, a factor here and it, it's a much more a comfortable experience for me. I can sit here with a cup of coffee looking at a nice bank of TV screens rather than cluttered inside an armoured vehicle getting my knee crushed by the 30 mil cannon. Yeah, it's much more comfortable. <laughs> I think what these two weeks will show is first of all that it's we've successfully demonstrated the capability, uh, but more importantly what we want to show is that the evidence you get from it is credible uh, and it's efficient. You know, it's relatively modest cost what we're doing here compared to uh, you know, ways that we've done this sort of thing traditionally or not being able to afford to do at all. This research model could soon be applied beyond armoured infantry to other branches of the army. For now, though, defence scientists will spend months poring over the data gathered here. Their conclusions will help decide how to equip and organise subunits of the Army of the future. Will Inglis, Forces News, Warminster.